in this video, I'm going to show the image of why we need to have a lean budget in a 30 system, which is a complete 30 system level besides the Jitter budget and the TX output of the 30s we discussed last time. Before talking about the lean budget, let's start with the goal of the lean transmission in the 30s. I think you should be able to answer it quickly now if you watch most of my videos. Correct. The goal of a link is simply to receive the same bit as what has been sent. For example, we send 10111011 and then we should receive 10111011 here to be more straightforward. No error or very low bit array during the digital communication is the goal. Unfortunately, the bird could be too difficult to evaluate for lots of impairments, and we must try to evaluate the transmission performance by other methodology or tools. What was the useful tool? Think about the sampling images for 5 seconds. Bingo! The sample voltage and sample timing margin from the sampling event will impact the bird. Therefore, the eye diagram will be a very useful tool to analyze the sampling event properly by chopping the waveform in each bit time over one unit interval and overlaying them shown in one UI or two UIs. Let's go through the eye diagram example once again, how it becomes a very useful tool for evaluating the design margin of the timing or signaling. For example, can you identify whether the CK data sample 1 or the CK data sample 2 is better to get the right decision or error free based on the right sampling position of timing margin? Correct. CK data sample 1 is too close to the decision threshold. Therefore, the sampler will be likely to get an error since it cannot differentiate 1 or 0 properly. On the other hand, can you identify whether the sample voltage 1 vs1 or sample voltage 2 vs2 has a better volume margin for low bit array target? Right, vs2 has a larger amplitude of the sample voltage and the greater SNR should be better to achieve a low bit array target than VS1 smaller amplitude. So overall, the performance metric or margin can be summarized by the I high and the I width easy. Let's start with the lean budget from the I high perspective one by one, and you could have a better idea of how to evaluate the lean budget from those images one by one. Let's start with the TX output suite, which was already shown in the white TX driver video. Again, the TX can send a big swing VTX2 for sure, but that has power penalty. Therefore, it could send a less swing VTX1 to save power as long as the swing was confirmed to be okay in the lean budget. Therefore, first of all, we must put the output swing of the lean budget in the I high estimation. What's next? Bingo! The frequency dependent channel loss caused the inter symbol interface ISI. Even though the output driver provides a big output swing, such as a 600 millivolt pick bit differential. The input I high of the eyes or the channel output is zero. Does this mean the whole 30 sync will fail under 22 dB loss in the link budget with no hope? Of course not, since we spend lots of time in a different equalizer, such as TXFV, ICTOE, and RXDFV. We should apply loss equalizer to mitigate the channel loss 
and enhance our learning performance. So, what should we do? Think about the correction images for 5 seconds. Yes, just apply the correction you plan to use and run the EQ simulation over PPT and find the worst case eye opening, which should be both eye high and eye width for the figure of Mary. But let's focus on the eye high here for simplicity. For the case study, both CTOE and DFE were applied to equalize the 22 dB loss on the next ray. Therefore, the CTOE can open the eye at about 60 mV P2P differential eye height, and the DFE would help to open the eye height further to 190 mV and the simpler front end. Therefore, the residual ISI would be another starting point at the eye sampler input for the link budget here. What's the next image for us to move forward? Think about the noise image for 5 seconds. Correct. For the error class, we will know the noise exists in a circuit inside a passive resistor or active transistor or any PN junction. For the render noise in a CMOS process, the thermal noise may be from the resistors and MOSFET, and the flicker noise is from the MOSFET. Lastly, the short noise occurs at any PN junction. Again, from the random signal class, you should also know that those noise are unbounded, which means we should evaluate the statistic characteristic to get a peak noise from the mean and standard deviation values. The larger peak noise amplitude occurs at the longer waiting time, or a larger number of samples in the ROI distribution. Therefore, the sigma value is related to the bird requirement. Again, the bit array is a total error divided by the total number of samples. So, the low bit array requires a greater number of samples or longer waiting time. For example, for bird equals 1e minus 12, the plus minus 7 sigma peak noise amplitude should be taken with a mean Gaussian noise in a link budget estimation. Similarly, the bird equals 1e minus 15 should take plus minus 8 sigma peak noise amplitude. Then, after recalling the noise, we can move the link budget forward with it. In this case study of the link budget with residual ISI and noise, the initial I high of the residual ISI is roughly 190 mV P2P differential, as shown before. If the IMS value of the noise is 5 mV at a sampler input, then the peak to peak noise amplitude would be 70 mV for bit array equals 1e minus 12. Then the remaining multi margin of the I high link budget would be 120 mV P to P differential. What else could eat the margin of link budget? Think about the device mismatch images for 5 seconds. Correct, DC offset, as we discussed in the YDC offset cancellation video, is the random mismatch of the device that causes different DC offset between second parts and it's a statistic characteristic to make sure the error is in a billion billion plus the peak DC offset of one wire mismatch must be calculated from the plus minus 6 gamma exported number which is 60 mV P2P differential voltage margin if the arms offset is 5 mV. Luckily, there are a few DC offset conservation approach that can reduce the offset at some degree. For example, the residual DC offset and the sample input could be only 5 mV P2P or less. Therefore, the residual eye high margin will be 
110 millivolt P2P differential. In addition to low circuit images, what else could be the system impairments of eating the eye high margin? Think about the interference images for 5 seconds. Correct. The system may have an impedance discontinuity causing defection, electromagnetic coupling causing the crosstalk, or poor power supply impedance causing the huge supply noise. Therefore, the signal integrity and power integrity would have very critical in your 30 system design, which we will talk about optimization later. Even though we must pay attention to those SI and PI designs to mitigate the eye high degradation, the total SI or PI degradation could be still in around 10 mV range. Therefore, the final residual eye high would be 100 mV P2P differential. Would I be all? If not, think about the final decision maker images for 5 seconds. Bingo! The final decision maker is the sample, which is also called a compactor or strong arm bridge. Remember the image from Why Not DFE Only video is that the sample needs to take the tiny input swing to convert or regenerate to the full swing by the positive feedback. In other words, the sample's clock Q delay would decrease if the input swing is increased and vice versa. Therefore, a simple delay image versus the input swing might not only tell you the bigger input swing may take a shorter time to reach the full swing at the output, but also show the maximum data rate from the high margin. For example, our final value I high is 100 mV P2P differential round. Then, the sample's response is roughly 50 picosecond. If another delay is starting less than 50 picosecond, then the maximum bit period of the DFE would be 100 picosecond, which would be the 1, 10 gigabit per second. On the other hand, if the target data rate is 8 gigabit per second, then the clock to Q delay can have an extra 25 picosecond longer margin, which makes the required input swing 60 mV less than it should be. So, the final sensitivity of the sample at 8 gigabit per second would be 40 mV, and the final eye high margin of the link budget would be 60 mV P2P differential. Then, it now only shows a good margin for the bit array equals 1 e minus 12 target, but also shows a possibility to meet the bur equals 1 e minus 15 target with 50 mV eye high margin. This is an exercise for you to go through all the voltage margin calculation one more time to figure out where the 50 mV margin for the bit array why it must fitting came from. Here is a summarized image of why we need to have a link budget in a 30 system. We start with the I high margin evaluation and we will discuss the I width margin next time. Okay, let's start with the TX output swing, 800 mV P2P differential, and 22 dB loss on the next ray. Then we have the CTOE and DFE to equalize the ISI over PVT. Then, a worst case residual ISI shows 190 mV P2P differential inner eye high as a starting point. Second, the render noise from the circuit would be 5 mV IMS under bur equals 1 minus 12. The P2P noise would be 70 mV. Third, the residual offset after the DC offset cancellation would be roughly 10 mV. Fourth, the SI or PI from the refraction, cost of, or supply noise would be another 10 mV. Lastly, the sample sensitivity could be 40 mV according to the required timing and the clock QD delay at the target data rate. Therefore, 
the overall volt margin of the I high in the lean budget will be 60 mV from the simple mat. Hopefully, this lean budget analysis will make you more confident that the whole link can meet the bur equals 1 minus 12 or bur equals 1 minus 15 confidently. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those 30 images, I'd love to hear your feedback and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be better from it.